Hi there, thrill seekers. So today, I'm gonna try something which I advise you not to try at home, and here's the reason. I am gonna read to you a little bit from a book. Ah, uh, a book I got on Kindle. I don't actually have the paper book of this one. This is uh, called The Seeking by Ramesh Balsakar. And let's see, the subtitle or the little thingy on the front says, Is there any such thing as free will? Is everything in life predetermined? Does God play dice with the universe? Mm, intriguing questions we all want to know. But as for the don't try this at home part, the re I feel like at pains to say this, is it pay? I don't know if that's the expression. But I feel like if you are going to follow a path, you should follow that path and kind of stick to it. And I don't like the sort of eclectic thing of like drawing from this and drawing from that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that because you tend to kind of you know pick and choose what you like and things that are uncomfortable for you get knocked out that way and and I feel like if you're gonna follow a path you should Ziggy's way up there in the ivy anyway you should stick with it and go for it but here I am giving you all this Advaita Vedanta stuff in the midst of oh, what's supposed to be a Zen channel but anyway I'm gonna read this passage and let's see where we can go with now a little bit about Ramesh Balsakar in case you haven't heard of him. Uh, I've mentioned him before on this channel. He's a guy I kind of discovered uh, maybe a year ago at the most, not very long ago, probably less than a year ago. He was a student of Nisargadatta Maharaj who wrote the book I Am That, which I like a lot and which I read uh, really for the first time last year and ended up reading three times all the way through because I enjoyed it so much. It was really interesting. And it's the Advaita Vedanta tradition and Balsakar was one of Nisargadatta Sagadatta Maharaja's translators, and so he's a, he's not exactly a Dharma heir in that sense, but he, he comes in that uh, line of people. And he was also a teacher of Leonard Cohen, which is kind of interesting. I'm not too swayed by, you know, celebrity associations, but um, Leonard Cohen also followed uh, um, Joshu Sasaki, which is sort of interesting because Joshu Sasaki was briefly one of my teacher's teachers, although not you know, not in a formal sense, just somebody he'd gone to. So, you know, a little bit of a connection there. Anyhow, this it is just something that struck me as being very sort of quintessential in Balsakar's philosophy. It, it expresses the same thing that Balsakar says in a lot of other places, but I think it does it succinctly, succinctly and very well. My point is, how do you know what you're looking for is real? real in phenomenal life? How do you know it is not an illusion? And the answer to that is, I know it is not an illusion because I've experienced it. When I'm on a holiday, when I'm resting, when I have the feeling of floating with life, I have had the sensation that this moment, what I have, is what I want for the rest of my life. You see? You have had that experience, therefore you can know that it is available in this life. When you had it, why did you lose it? He's talking to a guy named uh, Rajans, I, I think that's how it's pronounced, and he says, Think of it, Rajans, and you will come to the conclusion, every time you had that feeling, some thought has shattered it. You had that experience, a thought comes, oh, I left something undone at the office. That feeling you have may be stirred, but it is not shaken, it is not broken. Similarly, other thoughts happen which are on the surface, they may stir your feeling, but they don't shake you out of it. That feeling is not shattered. Therefore, what kind of thought has, in your own experience, shattered the peace you were enjoying in the moment? And you will find, if you go into it, that the thought which has shattered your peace in the moment is a thought of something you did in the past, something you did last week or ten years ago, something which you know you should not have done, or something you could have done for a friend and did not do. Therefore, my point is, what surely breaks the foundation of that peace in the moment is a thought of something you did or you should not have done, or something you could have done and did not do, shame and guilt, or a thought of hatred and malice towards someone, exactly the same thing, who did to you what he should not have done, or did not do for you what he could have done. So you go into it, make your own research, and I can tell you with confidence that the thought which truly shatters the peace everyone has enjoyed some time or the other is a thought of shame and guilt for one's action or lack of action, or hatred and malice toward the other for the same reason. The Buddha said, what will enlightenment do for me? Enlightenment means the end of suffering. Straight, enlightenment means the end of suffering. 
So we have to find out what Buddha means by suffering. Sorry, I had to stop recording for a minute there because the Ziggy, the, the, the neighbor's cat got in the yard and then Ziggy was looking at the cat and then the neighbor was trying to get the cat back and there was a bit of drama here. He's looking where the cat was, but the cat's not there anymore. Let me see if I can continue. Where was I? Buddha was no fool. He knew from personal experience that even after his total understanding, he could never know what the next moment will bring, and if the next moment is suffering, pain, it has to be accepted, and the pain has to be suffered. Knowing that, the Buddha categorically and boldly says, enlightenment is the end of suffering. And my interpretation of what Buddha meant is, enlightenment, total realization that no one is a doer, neither me nor the other, removes the suffering which smashes the foundation of the peace whenever I have it. And that suffering is the enormous, massive load everyone carries, a load of shame and guilt for one's own action and hatred and malice for the other's action. Remove this load and you truly do not have to wait for the peace to occur. Remove this burden of pride and arrogance for good deeds, shame and guilt for the bad ones, hatred and malice toward the other. Remove that burden and you will find that you do not have to look for peace. Absence of this load is the presence of what I am looking for. See what I mean? That is my concept, Rajans. Therefore, I put it to you, according to my concept, all that any spiritual seeker can have is just this, never being uncomfortable with myself, never having to hate myself for anything, never having to be uncomfortable with the other, never having to hate the other. That is all. If out of self-realization you expect much more than that, you will have to look elsewhere. My concept will not help you. And I really like that. I thought it put everything that I've read from Ramesh Balsakar into a nice little package. Well, maybe not everything, but a lot of the stuff into a nice little package that was easy to understand and pretty quick. Uh, and the other day, uh, two different people, oh, there's Ziggy, sent me the same article from The Guardian about free will and about a bunch of different uh, people's interpretations of free will and, and all this stuff, including uh, Sam Harris and my favorite guy in the world, and some other people. And the article was very interesting, and I thank those people who sent it to me, but it was also kind of really intellectual. And I think uh, whoever wrote the article was coming to the argument of free will versus determinism from a materialistic standpoint. And not to put words in my teacher's mouth, but I feel like Nishijima Roshi's understanding of free will was a much better one because he didn't come to it from a materialistic standpoint and I think what he would have said this is more I'm putting words in his mouth but I think I'm right here uh, that if you come at it from a materialistic point of view you have to completely exclude the the whole matter of free will there cannot be free will in a materialistic universe if the universe is matter and that's all it is then then free will has no place in it. And, and you can kind of figure that out. And this is where the art, article in The Guardian came at it. They were coming at it from a materialistic standpoint and saying, okay, well, obviously there's no free will. But materialism is incomplete. And it doesn't encompass everything. And what a guy like Ramesh Balsakar would say, and what my teacher said, is basically the free will versus determinism argument is is kind of similar to the materialism versus idealism argument. Neither one is the answer. Free will is not the answer. Determinism is not the answer. Determinism is what you get when you look at everything from a materialistic standpoint, and free will is what you get when you look at everything from an idealistic standpoint. Uh, neither idealism nor materialism is the correct answer. So free will is an illusion. Determinism is also an illusion. It's not that one is an illusion and the other one is right. They are both illusions. They are both wrong. The other thing I find that Ramesh Balsakar did not do in this talk, which kind of disappointed me, is the thing that Dogen does and the Buddhists do, which is that the argument against free will, at least unrestricted free will, is also a very, very strong argument for ethical behavior. Because if you behave ethically, then you don't have shame or guilt, or as much shame or guilt. I mean, you might have shame or guilt still, I know I do, but uh, you have less of it because you're accumulating less of it because you're acting ethically. And you don't have hatred towards others because that's also part of the ethical action is, is not to hate. So 
ethics to me is seriously important and seriously important whether you believe in free will or whether you don't believe in free will uh, the the argument for being ethical I think is super strong and this is something I've tried to put out in this new book that I'm writing uh, there's more to that chapter uh, than uh, than what I just read there's more to the book than what I just read Balsakar is an interesting guy I invite you or encourage you to check him out he's all over YouTube uh, there's more Ramesh Balsakar in, uh, videos on YouTube than, than of me, <laughs> you know. Uh, he's, he got into the game faster. I don't think he did. I think some of his students started videotaping him and putting him up on YouTube. But there's a lot of him out there. And he's an interesting guy and worth checking out. But stick to the Zen path because the Zen path is better. That's what I say. That's what I'm bound. That's what my contract says I have to say. The Zen contract that I signed with the Zen Mafia. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little excursion into uh, free will and determinism, and I thank you for your donations, which you have the free will to donate to me. You have free will. You can donate to me. If you want to do that, you can find my PayPal and Patreon addresses by going to the URL oops, that you're seeing on the screen below. That is my only way of making a living right now. That's it. That's all I get. But I really thank you guys for supporting me because you do, and if you're having financial trouble, don't donate to me because there are people who are supporting me and that's good so I thank you and have a good time all the time see you later bye